Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Um, I guess you could say this is part one of symbolism and figures of speech in the Bible. Uh the, well, maybe it's part two. I don't know how you look at it, but the first one, if the first one was the introduction, part one, well, then this is part two. This is going to be on the dog or dogs. You know, there's times in the Bible where uh, someone's called a dog. Now, in modern usage, if a man considered a certain female unattractive, he might call her a dog. But uh, matter of fact, if you look up the word bitch, it actually refers to a female dog. But modern usage has turned that into a, I guess, a curse word, I, I guess you could say. So, with that in mind, let's take a look. All right, well, turn your Bible to the book of Deuteronomy. It is considered one of the books of Moses. Some people call it the Torah. And we're going to look at chapter 23. Verses 17 and verses, verses 17 and 18. Now, this is a thing that's called parallelism. Because the second verse I'm going to read will explain the first verse. Or the first verse will explain the second verse. Figure of speech. A lot of symbolism and figures of speech in the Bible. Deuteronomy 23 and verse 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Now, people, let me, I'm going to read that again, but let me tell you something. The Bible had a solution for uh, sodomites. Of course, today they don't follow that. Now they have pride parades and celebrate it. But um, the Lord told you what to do with them, lest it spread because they will recruit your sons as they become elementary school teachers. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So, so let's, uh, let's read that again. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Verse 18, thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog. Did you catch that? Did you catch that? Parallelism. Nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. What is the hire of a whore? It's a prostitute, right? So if a whore or a sodomite was to bring money into the 
house of God and say, hey, uh, Calvary Chapel pastor, can you uh, make a prayer for me? And they drop the money in the box or whatever, you know. No. God doesn't want their money. For even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. See, sodomites are likened as a dog. Yeah. Think about it. All right, let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 56. If you're interested, I got a playlist on the book of Isaiah. An entire playlist. Isaiah is... I consider one of the most important books in the Bible. I don't think it's an easy one, but it's important. And um, sorely neglected among the so-called church. So with that in mind, let's read this very short chapter. Verse 1. Isaiah 56, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, Keep ye judgment and do justice. For my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Let not the son of the stranger that hath joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuchs, eunuchs say, Behold, I am a dry tree. And if you don't know what a eunuch is, um, let's just say they had their reproductive organ uh, rendered inoperable whether it was done by man or from the mother's womb. I don't know. A dry tree. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant. See, the Lord offers his covenant and we are to take hold of it. See, we all have a choice. Well, not all of us, but the Lord, all the Lord's people have a choice. They can accept or reject. And we're in that time period when it seems the most majority reject. Verse 5. Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than that of sons and of daughters. Hmm. So you're a eunuch and you can have children? God's going to give you something better than that. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. So what about this new name thingy? Well, let's read what Jesus says in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, and in the stone a new name written written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Ah, God's going to give you a white stone with a new name, and a name that only you will know. Hmm. Let's go back to Isaiah 56. Verse 5. Even unto them 
will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Also the sons of the strangers, a stranger that joins themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. For mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. Remember when Jesus uh, got mad at the you-know-whos in the temple and said, uh, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves? Oh, yeah. Well, that's my paraphrase. but And you can read that in Luke 19.46, Matthew 21.13, or Mark 11.17. Let's read Mark eleven seventeen, And he taught, saying unto them, Is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Oh, yeah. I wonder who did that. Hmm. Verse 8 of Revelation, uh, Isaiah 56, verse 8. The Lord God, which gathereth the outcast of Israel saith, Yet will I gather others to him beside those that are gathered unto him. All ye beasts of the field come to devour, yea, all ye beasts in the forest. His watchmen. Now these are the Lord's watchmen. Well, they're supposed to be. But they're not doing their jobs. Listen to this. His watchmen are blind. They're spiritually blind. They are all ignorant. What is being ignorant? It means you lack knowledge. It means you don't know something. You know, when it comes to calculus, I'm ignorant. Oh, yeah. I'm extremely ignorant when it comes to calculus. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. Dumb dogs. They cannot bark. You ever, ever have a dog? I've, I've had a, you know, my family used to have a bunch of them. My dad must have rescued over 20 dogs in his lifetime. I had at least one that was actually mine, mine. You show a dog affection, feed it, take care of it, it'll warn you when there's danger. They'll bark. They will let you know danger. You ever watch Lost in Space? Danger, Will Robinson. Danger, Will Robinson. But these are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Why? Because they're sleeping, laying down, loving to slumber. Lazy dogs that don't warn God's people of the danger. Verse 11. Yea, they are greedy dogs. Oh, yeah. You want to see greedy dogs? Turn on TBN. Every single one of them. And people will send them money. Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. They got 10 million, they want 20. They have 20, they want 50. They got 50, they want 100 million. Never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, every one for his gain from his quarter. Come ye, say they, I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink, and tomorrow shall be as this day, 
and much more abundant. Greedy dogs. Oh, yeah. You know, in Matthew 7 and verse 6, Jesus speaking, he said, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. What does it mean, rend? It means to tear. You ever have seen a, a wild boar's tusk, their teeth? You ever see the Disney movie, Old Yeller? What happened to Old Yeller? He got, he got ripped to shreds by the hogs. Oh, yeah. And died. Some people cried when Old Yeller died. I never was much one for movies and television. Bible, Jesus says not to give that which is holy unto the dogs. Is it talking about sodomites and their pride? You ought to read what Romans chapter 1, what Paul says about that. Say God gives them up to a reprobate mind. God sears their conscience with a hot iron. Yeah, I'm paraphrasing, but yeah, you get the idea. What about casting your pearls before swine? You know, the other I think it was last night I was you know, I go through the news and what have you and try to bring everybody the latest information, you know, as a warning. And uh, I was going through YouTube and Calvary Chapel popped up in my feed and uh, about the pre-trib rapture. Oh, if you don't know what Calvary Chapel is, it's a mega church. I went to one once. You know, they got thousands of people that attend this place. Sat through a sermon that even Satan wouldn't even be offended by. You know, the guy was telling jokes and talking about his golf game. And um, then he preached some kind of thingy that nobody would have been offended at. I was like, I'm like, what am I doing here? Somebody invited me to church. A uh, number of years ago, probably about 15 years ago, I didn't, you know, I didn't know what it was, Calvary Chapel. I do now. But this was another Calvary Chapel, not our local one here in South Florida, but uh, it was on the pre-trib rapture and why they believe the pre-trib rapture. And I was getting ready to post some comments, and I started reading the comments. And I started reading the comments and reading the comments. And, I was, and, I, and this verse came to mind. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine. People that go to Calvary Chapel... I could almost guarantee you they never read their Bibles. I could almost guarantee it. Because if they did, they wouldn't be members. They wouldn't go to Calvary Chapel. People don't. They don't read. I, I, I've met so few people that have ever read their Bible cover to cover. Very few. And if you don't like reading, well, get Alexander Scorby. Uh, King James Bible on audio. That's what I do on the way to work every day. 30 minutes there, 30 minutes back. I listen to about an hour's worth of Bible study every, uh, on the audio every day. It's amazing what you could pick up in a very short period of time. It really is. But I felt like I'd be casting my pearls before swine. 
These are the people that think God loves everybody. When Malachi says that God hated Esau. Yeah. Casting your pearls before swine. And they will turn again and rip you to shreds. Yeah. No thank you. There was a woman that came to Jesus asking him to heal her child. In Matthew 15, 26, he said, It is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Oh, yeah. And how about the book of Philippians? Philippi was a city in Greece. And if you live there, you were called a Philippian. Just like if you live in Texas, you're a Texan. If you live in New York, you're a New Yorker. If you live in Florida, you're a Floridian. Well, they were Philippians. Chapter 3, verse 1. Boy, the Paul haters hate Paul because of stuff like this. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Four-legged dogs? I don't think so. You know, I've only met maybe two dogs in my whole life that I didn't like. Yeah. I think it's talking about two-legged dogs. You know, the hire of a whore or the price of a dog. Oh, yeah. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. What is the concision? Well, there's this guy named Webster. Perhaps you've heard of him. Yeah, the Webster's Dictionary. He did a dictionary in 1928. If you can get a Webster's 1828 dictionary by Noah Webster, you're doing well. Not only was he a language scholar, a linguist, but he was also a believer. And many of his word definitions refer to the Bible. Concision, noun, Latin, it means to cut off. Literally a cutting off. Hence, in Scripture, the Jews are those who adhere to circumcision, which after our Savior's death, which after our Savior's death, you think this guy was a Christian? Absolutely. Which after our Savior's death was no longer a seal of the covenant, but a mere cutting of the flesh. And then he quotes Philippians chapter 3, verse 2. Beware of dogs, beware of the concision. Incredible. Who was his savior? Uh, the guy that the New Testament was all about? Yeah, his name was Jesus. Yeah. Beware of the concision. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. Now, let's read the next verse. For we are of the circumcision. See, they're talking about concision. Now they're talking about circumcision. See, the Bible, the King James Bible, will explain the King James Bible if you let it. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. And people tell me, oh, Paul's a false apostle. Yeah. Maybe to them that he's a false apostle because they're not, they don't belong to Christ. 
Yeah. At least I don't think so. In Revelation chapter 22, let's start in verse 13. I am Alpha and Omega. What is Alpha? That's where we get the word alphabet. Alpha, Beta, A and B. Alphabet, Alpha, Beta, the first two letters of the Greek alphabet. Alpha is where you get the word A, you know, A, the letter A, Alpha. I am Alpha and Omega. What is Omega? It's the last letter of the Greek alphabet. And your Hebrew roots heretics will, well, they don't want to believe the Greek New Testament. They want to take you back to the Old Testament and turn you into a Jew without Jesus. See, their Messiah is Yeshua HaMashiach. And according to the complete Jewish Bible, that's the guy in Isaiah 14 that fell from heaven. The King James translates that as Lucifer. Yeah. And I got a video with proof of that if you don't believe it. Yeah. Yeshua in Isaiah, I mean, in Revelation 22, is the morning star. Yeshua is the morning star. Well, when you go to Isaiah 14, the morning star fell from heaven. It's being cast down to Sheol, which is hell, to be covered in worms. It was cast down out of heaven because of his wickedness and sin. Yeah. And people, oh, Yeshua, Yeshua. Yeah, Yeshua is Lucifer. Jesus in Revelation 22, 13, I am Alpha and Omega. The first letter of the Greek alphabet and the last letter. The beginning and the end, the A to Z. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments. What commandments? The two commandments. To love the Lord and love thy neighbor. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Boy, I've, I've read that so many times. Yeah. Maybe we should read it again. Just in case there's somebody new. In Matthew twenty-two thirty-six, 36, someone asked Jesus, what was the most important commandment? And they said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all all the law and the prophets. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. See anything in there about circumcision? Me neither. Anything about Sabbath keeping? Uh, no. Um, anything about uh, burning bulls or goats or lambs? No. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And hopefully we have enough sense to know that we're not to love the enemies of God and have them as neighbors. Hey, if you got Satanists as neighbors, maybe it would be a good idea to move. Hey, Torah keepers. Uh, the Torah says to be rid of Satanists and the uh, people in the LBGT community. So when are you going to start keeping Torah? So really, you're a bunch of lying hypocrites because you don't. Yeah, you know it. I know it. You know it. 
We all know it. Verse 14, Revelation 22. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city. For without, outside, for without are dogs and saucers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Hmm. But the complete Jewish Bible doesn't say Jesus. It says Yeshua. And then when you turn to Isaiah 14, the morning star fell from heaven. And guess what? The NIV Bible does the same heresy. Turns Jesus into Lucifer. And then they'll tell you, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you call him. Yes, it does. The apostles were able to cast out devils in the name of Jesus. Well, his mother and his father were Jews, and they were Hebrews, and they wouldn't give him a Greek name. His name was Yeshua. Show me from the Bible. I'll give you $1,000 cash, $100 bills, 10 of them. Show me from the Bible, my King James Bible, where it says Yeshua in the New Testament. Come on, you liars, hypocrites, deceivers children of the devil yeah they are anybody can tell you that the morning star fell from heaven and Yeshua is the morning star they're devils and I got screenshots to prove that's exactly what they do with that complete Jewish Bible by Messianic David Stern. Yeah. Yeah, they're complete. Yeah, they're complete. How come they're... Why are they ashamed to call themselves Christians? Because they're not. Yeah. Listen, people. I'm on Odyssey, too. I got a channel on Odyssey. And, uh... So, if... I ever disappear from here I might be on Odyssey Odyssey's downloaded my videos a lot of them so in Proverbs 26 11 we read as a dog returneth to his vomit so a fool returneth to his folly ah, I've seen that happen Dad had a dog, it would throw up, wait a couple minutes, and then it would eat it right back. I I could never get, the, you know, your stomach's telling you to get rid of something, and you're going to take it back. And that's how a lot of people are with sin. They'll go right back to that old sin. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 22, but it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the sow, a pig that was washed, to her wallowing in the mire. Guess what? Pigs love to roll around in the mud. You could take a pig, you could wash it. But it's going to go right back to the mud. You can take a pig and baptize them in the name of Jesus. And they will go right back to the mud hole. Every time. Without fail. Let's read Psalms chapter 22. Think about the crucifixion of Christ. When you read, when I'm reading this, 
think about the crucifixion of Christ. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Wow. Isn't that exactly what Christ said? Yeah. Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, and in the night season, and am not silent. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee, and were delivered. They trusted in thee, and were not confounded. But I am a worm, and no man, a reproach of men, and despised of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. Isn't that what they did to Christ? They shoot out the lip, they shake the head, saying, He trusted on the Lord, that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighteth in him. Boy, there is so much of this that is right off the crucifixion. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God for my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and a roaring lion. I don't know how many of you people um, listen to uh, the Guess Who. You might have known him before he, the Guess Who, but uh, the uh, lead guitarist was Randy Bachman. Perhaps you've heard of Bachman Turner Overdrive, BTO. Sadly, he's a Mormon. But when he was with the Guess Who, they did a song called Hang On To Your Life. And the very last part of the song, they read this. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. Why was all Christ's bones out of joint? Because he's hanging on the cross. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death. And that was, uh, hang on to your life. Verse 16. For dogs, there's those dogs again. For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Crucifixion, people. I may tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. People, do you know how much of this was fulfilled in Christ's crucifixion? Wow! But be not thou far from me, O Lord, O my strength, thou hast to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling, from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. And if you don't know what a unicorn is, it is not a horse with a horn sticking out of its forehead. No. It's the Asian rhino. The difference between an Asian rhino and an African rhino is an African rhino has two horns. The Asian rhino uh, Asian rhino has one. That's why it's called uni. One. You know, universe or unity. That's where, you, you know, uni means one. You ever heard of a unicycle? 
One wheel? Yeah. A unicorn. Uh, an Asian rhinoceros. There you go. And you know what it's called? Unicornus. Unicornus rhinos, rhinoceros or rhinoceros. I'm not sure how they pronounce that, but in Latin, you know. I speak English, people. I'm not a Latin scholar. Give me a break. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him, all ye the seed of Jacob. Glorify him and fear him, all ye the seed of Israel. For he hath not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, neither hath he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard. My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's. He is the governor among the nations. All they that be fat upon earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow before him, and none can keep alive his own soul. A seed shall serve him, it shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. And when they're talking seed, they're talking children. That's going to be another study, probably. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born, that he hath done this. Oh, yeah. And by the way, people, I got a, a copyright strike somehow on my last video. Not this one, but the one before. The symbolism in the Bible. I mean, it's just me talking. So maybe it's one of the images, but I don't know. I have no idea. But they might give me a copyright strike. I don't know. And if I do, it's going to be a couple weeks. Ugh, I'm getting tired of this garbage from the tube. In Matthew 27, verse 35, And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. Oh, yeah. See, right out of uh, Psalms 22. Matthew 27, uh, 42. Ver 41. Likewise also the chief priests, mocking him with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. Skip down to verse 46. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Right out of Psalms 22. Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, This man calleth for Elias. Now, here it is. He's speaking Hebrew. And these Jews don't even know what he's saying. Oh, he's calling for Elias. But he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? See, all these people that talk about Hebrew roots, they don't know what they're talking about. This was 2,000 years ago give or take. And they didn't even understand Jesus speaking Hebrew. This man calleth for Elias. No, he didn't. He said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Oh, yeah. For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Just remember, King David, writing this psalm, 
was the son, well, Christ was the root and offspring of David. He was the beginning of David, and he's the son of David. Yeah. And when you can figure that out, you'll know who Christ really is. See, Christ created the heaven and the earth. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. And then there's people tell you, oh, well, Jesus isn't God. He never said he was God. Oh, you mean the creator of the heavens and the earth? Is not God? Really? Really? In Colossians 1.16, speaking of Jesus, Paul, speaking of Jesus, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Ephesians 3 9, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. In John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Oh, yeah. Read First Timothy 3.16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Most people don't even know who Jesus is. That, that's why they hate the name of Jesus. These, these deceivers, they know who he is. But they don't want you to know who he is. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Truly amazing. The amount of deception in this world. And Jesus warned about over and over and over to be not deceived. Don't be deceived. And the only way to not be deceived is to read his words. Pray for understanding. And you'll get it. So, well, now you know what a dog is. Next time you see a pride parade, bark at them. Yeah. Warn the children. The dogs are coming. All right. Well, with that in mind, symbolism and figures of speech in the Bible. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.